Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Uh, we're going to start this talk kind of casual, and uh, but there are certain specific points that we want to make. Uh, this one, I'll start with radical Islamist group tries to branch out. This is Steve Emerson, back July 7th, 2011. I'm telling you, that's 10 years, 10 years ago. So what he's talking about here is they're using almost our same words on a, off of some of our flyers, a collection of flyers, to explain where we're coming from. So what it says, for 30 years, Masjid al-Islam, Sabakun Mosque, has been carrying on direct face-to-face -face struggle against the monolithic Zionist American regime. Abdul Alim Musa said in an urgent appeal to support the new Islamic Institute of Counter Zionist American Psychological Warfare. You gotta remember now, a little bit after this, the sign in Oakland that says Islamic Institute for Counter Zionist American Psychological Warfare was pulled down. Why would anybody pull that sign down? Number one is big. It was written on the same size as a, I guess, four by 12, four by eight. Is that the size of, uh, oh, is that the size of, uh, let's see, uh, what do we call it? A sheet rock, yeah. Is that four, nine, four by eight, okay. Written that side. That's pretty good size. When you drive by it, I'm telling you, the people now, I would sit in the, uh, you know where if you sit in, if you have the lights off and you're sitting in a building and it's one of those black uh, metal uh, gates with the little holes in it and the bars, nobody can see you in there. From the outside, and they're looking at that, they just see a black door, da 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 da. But you can see everybody out there. They pull by a zoop and they stop. Everybody that's semi conscious. Now, especially, you got to remember in Oakland, you have a lot of Arabs and other, and semi conscious people, black nationalists and all that. So they drive and zoop. Some people. They want to make sure it hit them when they get halfway down the street. They make a U-turn and come back and pull right in front of the building to look at it. Anyway, so we knew what we were doing when we put the sign up. This is baiting people. This is playing with them. And you have to know the nature of the people you, you're trying to bait. Number one. What's the characteristics of uh, a, a Zionist nowadays? He's absolutely arrogant. Especially now when he's dealing with America, because you have to remember, they have, after 9-11 and all of that, and they did what they did and then blamed it on other people and everybody, the government accepted it. They didn't accept it or, because they believed it, they accepted it because of the overwhelming power of the Zionists. And then you have to watch when you have the FBI director, uh, Comey, or uh, whatever, remember the tall guy? Okay. And he has to humble himself. And they are doing this to him and doing that to him. What does the FBI agents think? They're getting, they're burning up. They're looking at their leader being mistreated by the American government, which is now controlled by the Zionists. They're an intelligence agency, too. And they can feel 
that will they know when they've been taken over? When they're taken over by the Zionists, when the Zionists are telling them what to do. Now, you know how different agencies are. Hey, you over there, don't come over here messing with us. You can see it on TV or anything. The FBI and the Sheriff's Department is over this, uh, this uh, whatever it is. Yeah, and so uh, in the common thing, the FBI uh, or the ATF takes over the investigation and the local cop solves a problem because he's smarter than all the big guys, right? This is a regular old script. It's a regular script. There is some, they've been talking for a long, year. We, we all know there's always been some inner agency competition or mind your own business, hey man. And, and they wouldn't share some things with each other. Okay, now imagine you have the Zionist over everything. That means, as far as the Congress is concerned, everybody can see the Zionists is controlling the Congress. And that's the way it is. The Zionist is controlling the, uh, okay, if Netanyahu or whoever is mad at Iran, that means no matter what the president said, we're going to make friends with Iran and we're going to do the treaty thing that we stepped out of, that Trump stepped out of, right? Trump stepped out of it. And you got to remember, we didn't say this last week or last month. We said from day one that Donald Trump is a, is a Zionist manipulated agent. And the Zionists know all about him because his son-in-law is married to a Zionist. Right? He made his son-in-law, don't have no experience in nothing, chief of the whatever, negotiations with dumb Arabs. The point I'm making it is, is that all of these are things are going on. Now, for us, and I'm not saying we're proud of ourselves, but we have to read all of these things. And our policy has to be, we are a minority in race and color. We are a minority within that race and color because we're Muslims. And we are a super minority in the general makeup of even the Muslims, right? We are cut off from them too. So we have to be patient when we talk about long range and all that. We have, that's real. We have to be, well, we don't have to be, but we are. Because of our own design and our own outlook, we have designed ourselves so that we're long range, optimistic, and patient. That's how we've been at the FBI and all of them on the line. Okay, now, how can you be so sensitive when you can measure the time that the Zionist actually feels confident that we have now taken over the U.S. government and its systems? That means the Congress got to go along with the Zionist, and everybody knows that. You can't come in there and say you don't like Zionists. You can say, I hate niggas, I hate white folks, I hate everybody except Zionists, and you'll be all right. Right? You can do that. You, can you imagine? But you got to remember, you're laughing and frowning laughing, but that's how ridiculous it is. Absurd. The, it's absurd, but they, they make our job easy. You got to remember what we're talking about now. Just to mention it to people, that they make our job easy. We don't have to have a big research plan, a big scheme. All we got to do is have the time and do a few things, bait the hook. Not every time, but from time to time, and throw it out there. 
We have experience with systems before. The American system, all the other colonized systems. And we also have experience with Zionists. What, what throws them off? What makes them mad? What makes them where they don't punch straight? They could punch straight, they got the power, they got all. How can we discombobulate the Zionists? The first thing is make them mad. You want to fight somebody that can fight real good? Tease him like Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah, da, 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 da. And Jack Johnson used to do that. Oh, Mr. Jeff, for the, who is, remember, Muhammad Ali and uh, Jack Johnson. Okay, that's, we've been using that style. And no matter what you tell people, they're not going to be up on it. And now there's a thing about the Americans we had some access to them without them knowing it, what it is. But we told them what it is, but still they're not going to get it. Number one, uh, my father was born in 1900. I listened to my father and all the old folks around him, and I observed their behavior. I observed their attitude. I observed how they dealt with the white man. That means when they came from the south to the west, they still bought their custom with them. So my father ran a gambling house in Oakland after some years. And he brought the southern, if you're going to run a gambling establishment, well, it's like anywhere else. You got to make sure the police get their share. And you got to play like, oh, boss, I ain't making a whole lot of money. Of course, I was watching him because we and him used to sit at the table and count our money. I'd be selling stuff and he'd be doing. And at night we'd be, he, he, he did good. So anyway, I had to study that. So I brought with me. The combination from the people who love Jack Johnson. How do you think I know about him so much? Because that generation loved Jack Johnson. They were the generation. Now that our people was Muhammad Ali. A few of them got, went back far as Joe Lewis. But to jump all the way back to Jack Johnson and to jump over all of them and then land at Muhammad Ali, it is because... This was our history, so therefore, you got to look at it. That means that that part of uh, that 33% or one-third of, of our makeup, one is Islamic, which we're going to automatically. The other is black national, you know, the black national, where we come through. And we're going to come through all of those, but what we're going to do is, when we wind up in Islam, everything will be Islamicized. But you don't forget what you know. So that's why we have been able to uh, calm boss man down. When the FBI came and you saw that they, they wasn't all jumping up and down the uh, and they came by there so you would know. You think they didn't know how to get here? Or what? No, no, no. They, they came there. They came there to let you know, to give me a witness. Okay, we'll get to that. I, I don't want to change my train of thought. But no, okay. Okay, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it at the end. Well, since it was asked right away, I'll try to remember. We have the period of uh, the early 1900s, and they have their way of dealing with white people. It's not our way, the young people who become black nationalists. But theirs worked for them at that time. Okay, it's superior game. Because, see, remember, 
when you're a black nationalist, you're a threat. And when you've got some Islam, you're a threat to the system and they got to use certain tactics. But when you back in Dixie in the early 1900s, you don't have nothing behind you. So you got to play off of boss man. And you got to make him comfortable with whatever he gives you and whatever he allows you to do is because he's just a, a good white man. Lordy, Lordy, he's right. Because you don't have nothing. You don't have no gun. You can't threaten him. Why? You a good old white man. You, Lord, have mercy. You a good old white man. And old Moles here, he ain't going to abuse nothing. If you, if you let him use your truck, if you let him use your tractor in 1950 when those white folks still didn't have tractors, one or two of them, 